Hello everybody, I'm Rene Ramos, director of the Lynn and Lewis Wolfson II Florida Moving Image Archives, and this is Rewind, the show that looks back on Florida's past with historic film and video. It's time for another trip back into the past, so sit back, relax, and enjoy another episode of Rewind. This is Fort Lauderdale, fifth largest city in Florida and the hub of booming Broward County. Located 30 miles north of Miami, Fort Lauderdale is a model suburb, one of the richest bedroom communities in the nation. 123,000 people live in Fort Lauderdale. It's primarily a residential community. The annual family income averages over $8,000. New homes in the more fashionable areas run as high as $100,000. Early developers called this city of waterways the Venice of America. Today, it's the yachting capital of the nation. A Fort Lauderdale address has become something of a status symbol. This is a conservative town where Republican politics and Protestant theology dominate and local government is pledged to keeping taxes low, real estate values high. It is a matter of local pride that Fort Lauderdale's credit rating is higher than New York City's. But at the heart of this affluence, there is a hard core of poverty an area where people are crowded together in filthy shacks and slum tenements. This is the near northeast section of Fort Lauderdale, the second city. Outlook, the award-winning weekly series of reports on issues and news events of interest to the South Florida community. Tonight, the second city a special film report on the slums of Fort Lauderdale. Your reporter, Jerry Pierce. Good evening. Discovering poverty and squalor beneath Fort Lauderdale's upper crust is like meeting a debutante with a dirty neck. The incongruity is shocking. For slums are commonly assumed to be only a big city problem. Actually, 70% of all current urban renewal projects are taking place in small towns. In a moment, a visit to Fort Lauderdale and the second city. This is Fort Lauderdale's second city, a 160-acre Negro ghetto wedged between the Florida East Coast Railroad tracks on the east, 9th Avenue on the west, Broward Boulevard on the south, and 6th Street on the north. It's identified simply as the northwest section. Like Miami's central Negro district, Fort Lauderdale's near northwest section is a grim and dirty place where the average income is below the poverty level of $3,000 a year. The bars, the pool rooms, all the seamy aspects are there to advertise the moral as well as the economic bankruptcy of this city within a city. As might be expected, this includes crime, disease, alcoholism, drug addiction, and chronic welfareism. The northwest section is roughly 34 square blocks of ancient tumble-down frame shacks and small apartment houses. A few are occupied by the owners, most are rented. These are not the high-density tenement slums of the big cities, but more typical of a rural shanty town. Attorney L.C. Hastings, president of the Fort Lauderdale NAACP. Over a period of years, any number of inequities have been allowed to exist in the greater Fort Lauderdale area. And among those, we feel at the NAACP are principally the lack of enforcement of the minimum housing code as well as the lack of a strong fire code to afford protection to the citizenry living in the Central Negro area. Also, we find that there are inadequate sewer facilities, and we find that there are poor drainage facilities available, and hardly any sidewalks in the near Northwest area, as well as poor, poor planning in the streets. 
This being the case, it's certainly necessary that our city officials look at these things with an eye toward correcting them. And we would hope that not only would we have the enforcement of a minimum housing code, rather we would have an even stronger housing code. This seems to be the key and seems to be the thing that has been overlooked most by our city officials. We would hope that this can be corrected. The city of Fort Lauderdale has had a minimum housing code since 1961, but few substandard shacks have actually come down, although some have been officially condemned. Several abandoned buildings dot the area, providing a haven for rats and derelicts and a dangerous playground for children. Other condemned buildings remain occupied. The bonded rental agency, which controls many slum properties in Dade County, also manages Fort Lauderdale's northwest section. Bonded's Broward manager is Roland Garcia. Bonded Rental Agency has never had any tenants living in houses that have been condemned by the city of Fort Lauderdale. We have only had two houses condemned by the city of Fort Lauderdale, and these are vacant. They are still standing because the city has given the owners an extension so that they may have enough money to demolish them. They were offered to the city fire department but the city fire department refused to burn them due to the fact that they were too close to other houses in the area. This rooming house, number 516, has 10 small rooms. When filmed, six were renting for $8.62 a week. There are no closets. Electrical outlets are broken or lacking. Extension cords snake dangerously from room to room, a fire hazard. There are two small kitchens in the building, but the stoves don't work because the landlord has not paid the gas bill. There is no hot water for the same reason. Rats and roaches have free access to food stored in cabinets. The exterior walls are riddled with holes. There is no extermination service. Although a small part of the weekly rent is supposed to be used for maintenance, none is evident water spills from a broken sewer pipe, a health hazard. This one family house in the rear, number 516 and a half, is occupied by two adults and seven children. The three rooms are crowded with furniture and bedding. Vernon pass freely through cracks in the walls and ceilings. Nine people eat in this kitchen. Cooking is done on a kerosene stove because gas is too expensive. The bathroom is an outhouse arrangement added to the front porch. The tenant, a longshoreman, pays $12.50 a week. WCKT newsman Ira Eisenberg discussed the code enforcement problem with Fort Lauderdale's five-term mayor, Edmund Burry. Condemned buildings in the northwest section of Fort Lauderdale that are still occupied. Some of them still occupied as long as a year after they've been condemned. Is the law being enforced? Yes, I would say that uh, by far the great majority have been demolished, and there are those exceptions which the uh, city inspection department under the building department watches, and due to some one little difference have been delayed, but they will be demolished, I'm sure. Why does it take so long? Well, I think your point's well made. It shouldn't take so long, but sometimes uh, Governments move slowly. They say the wheels of justice move slowly, and <laughs> we do too. Do you think we hope to speed it up. There are not yet many large apartment buildings in Fort Lauderdale's northwest section, the so-called concrete monsters of the more developed slums. However, this one at 819 Northwest 2nd Street is typical of a growing trend. Its owners are George and Louise Robinson, William Robinson, and Mary Smith. Tenants pay $15 a week for tiny two-bedroom apartments. Gas and electricity are extra. Little attention is given to maintenance. Screens are torn, windows broken, and steel doorways are literally rusting away. Garbage and stagnant water cover the floor of this vacant apartment. Landlords accuse tenants of having no respect for the place they live in but the owners show little regard for their own property.
Waste collectors refused to lift these sunken garbage cans which filled with water when it rained. Filled with old refuse and dry water, they are a spawning ground for mosquitoes and roaches and a continuing threat to the health of the entire city. Last summer, Fort Lauderdale's northwest section was infested with mosquitoes that carry yellow fever. The invasion was attributed to the uncollected trash and garbage, a general condition in the area. Negro religious leaders see the filth and neglect of the northwest section as morally degrading and spiritually corrosive. City fathers have been talking about Fort Lauderdale's second city for at least a decade, but concrete action has been slow in coming. That story after this message. If Fort Lauderdale's northwest section is so bad, the logical question is, why do people continue to live there? Why don't they move somewhere else? Well, they are, at least those who can afford to. New low-priced housing developments to the north and west are attracting buyers from the slums. For those who can, home ownership is a dream come true, the goal of a lifetime. A handful of Negro professionals and businessmen have built luxury homes that would not be out of place in Fort Lauderdale's most exclusive white sections. The result has been a rising vacancy rate in the old northwest section. Bonded, the area's largest rental management firm, reports 24% of its properties unoccupied. Recently and somewhat reluctantly, the city organized an urban renewal agency. The foundation for the agency was laid in 1961 when the state legislature passed a law enabling Fort Lauderdale to participate in the federal urban renewal program. But it wasn't until two years ago that the city commission hired staff members to initiate plans for slum clearance. And it wasn't until January of last year that the Fort Lauderdale Urban Renewal Agency got its first executive director. He is 44-year-old Chicago attorney James B. Hibben. He's questioned next by WCKT newsman Ira Eisenberg. Mr. Hibben, is, is the time right at the present for urban renewal in Fort Lauderdale? Well, I think the time is ideal. The, uh, the housing market in the Negro community in greater Fort Lauderdale is probably as soft, probably as weak as it's going to be for many years to come. New construction in the outlying areas, especially in the county, has produced a, an extremely large number of new housing units. Vacancies have risen within the older sections of the inner city, so that the pressure on the existing housing inventory is about as low as it's going to be. If we, if we wait, the, uh, the likelihood of the area becoming developed with uh, inadequate housing going to increase the uh, prospect of an expensive urban renewal project. Today, I think the city has the opportunity to uh, bring about a rebuilding of the inner city through urban renewal about as inexpensively as it can ever uh, possibly forecast. What is your big stumbling block now? Well, the problem that the city faces at this time is, first of all, to secure an approval as to a particular plan. We've done two planning proposals for the near northwest section. We're meeting with community organizations, developing a reaction to these proposals. The first step then is for the Urban Renewal Agency itself to make a decision as to a particular plan. The second decision that needs to be reached is a decision as to financing. Uh, as you may have heard, the city has for a long time been opposed to accepting federal funds for urban renewal. It is said, at least at the time when the Urban Renewal Agency was established, that there would be an election to determine the method of financing with federal funds or if the city would use local funds to pay the full cost of the project. And we hope in the summer of this year or perhaps later for an election which would decide this particular question. Urban renewal planners have come up with not one but two proposals for redeveloping Fort Lauderdale's northwest section. The basic plan calls for apartments, townhouses and private homes built around a central park. Total cost five and a half million dollars. An alternate plan calls for a network of canals feeding into the new river. It would mean lower density and better drainage, but would cost an additional million dollars. There are also three alternate ways of financing the project. The first provides for paying all the costs out of local taxes. Plans two and three involve varying amounts of federal assistance. All three are controversial. There's an immediate need for urban renewal in your city. Well, I feel that we have been at it now for about four or five years. We've, sanitation has been wonderful. 
drainage is complete, new streets are being built, these homes are being destroyed. We intend to keep up and to clean up and make it a livable community over the next three or four years completely. The biggest stumbling block seems to be uh, the controversy over whether or not the city should accept federal money. Yes, well, I think you know that I've stated I'm perfectly willing to go either way. If the majority in this upcoming election would rather take federal aid to do it, well, that's all right. And if they do not, why, it will please me, and uh, we will continue to spend our money to clean up our own problem. You have said that uh, you would not want to accept federal money. What's wrong with accepting federal money? It's a matter of opinion. I didn't say I do not want it. I just told you that I would accept if the majority wanted. I'll always agree by majority rule. I happen to have been raised in an era that'll back behind you a bit when we all took care of ourselves. But that doesn't apply anymore. And so whatever the uh, majority of voters wish to do, that I will also be glad to do. But do you think it's wrong to accept the No, I only know that these programs, when they are added together, and we have a new federal urban renewal program on top of the old one, and I can assure you if everybody gets what they're asking for, we'll be up in the trillions by the time all of these obligations are added together, and your dollar will keep sinking, which it is now. The more your debt increases, the more your dollar goes down. And for the person that has built up his pension or has insurance policies or Anything with hard dollars will wind up with very soft dollars. I don't happen to like it, but again, the majority view prevails. Do you think the job can be done as quickly and as thoroughly with, through a privately financed program? I would personally like to see it financed primarily by private capital, as you say. That's the way it has always been done. And if they can do it or help do it and we can do our share, it would make me very happy. Commissioner Fred Welker is a real estate man and a self-styled progressive. We're not going to become any more integrated as a result of using federal funds for urban renewal than we are using them for school or anything else. In my opinion, this is an excuse. I don't think we need a crutch or an excuse today to face fact. Fort Lauderdale needs urban renewal, and they need it badly. I, for one, am in favor of doing whatever is necessary to carry out the program that has been implemented. I, for one, don't believe that we are nearly as, oh, ultra-conservative as some people would have us believe. I think this is a progressive community. It's a beautiful community. I don't think we should allow it to become stagnated as a result of not taking the funds necessary, even if they are federally implemented. I think we need them. I am for them. Again, I'll repeat, I am for them. The Urban Renewal Agency does not take a position on the financing question. The agency's position is that urban renewal is needed. The city has already decided that urban renewal is needed. The question to be resolved is the question as to financing. The agency's position is that urban renewal should go ahead. Do you believe that federally financed urban renewal will plunge the city into socialist experimentation? My personal feelings, and I've repeated these to many people, uh, are that the city would be making a serious mistake if it did not accept federal funds to carry out an urban renewal project. The, uh, the federal government uh, does not dominate the local public agency. It does not send representatives in to run the project. The project remains a local project, locally conceived, locally directed, locally managed, with federal financial assistance. Well, say Fort Lauderdale does go through with its urban renewal plan. This, of course, will not affect areas outside of Fort Lauderdale. What about the slums outside of the city? Well, we would hope that with the city of Fort Lauderdale addressing itself to the problem of reclaiming its worn out neighborhoods. That the county would begin to become concerned about some of the so-called suburban slums that exist. Now, as you may have noticed that on the fringes of uh, Fort Lauderdale and weaving into Broward County, we have a number of substandard areas. We would hope that Broward County would, through its area planning board, become interested in the removal of those slum areas and the rebuilding of those areas and would ultimately develop a county urban renewal agency. 
Critics of urban renewal claim none but the very poor will ever want to live in the near northwest suction because of the area's built-in handicaps. For example, the railroad tracks along the area's eastern edge do little to enhance property values. Under the canal scheme, a major stretch of tracks would be buffered by a waterway. Then there is the 6th Avenue Transformer Station, an ugly maze of high-voltage power equipment. It could be screened, but heavy power lines would continue to snake through the area on huge cement pillars. Renewal plans call for underground utility wires, but the Florida Power and Light Company says it is technically and financially unfeasible. There is also the 7th Avenue gas plant with its huge silver tanks and confusion of pipes, valves, and gauges. The only hope for the second city's future is the willingness of several slum owners to replace their shacks with sound and attractive new homes. However, urban renewal officials are trying to discourage development of this sort so as not to complicate the final renewal plan. The thing that is needed most in the slum area at the moment is urban renewal. There's no question but that urban renewal will provide the vehicle that will give us an opportunity to cause the surrounding areas to improve as well. Now, attendant to the improvements that urban renewal will bring, the city must undertake to increase the sewer facilities as well as provide adequate wide streets and sidewalks. If these things are not done, we suspect that the same type seething community that exists in other areas of our country will foment right here in Fort Lauderdale. And we can envision, and certainly at the NAACP, that demonstrations will take place that may very well cause the city to have to take a look at the problems that we have as opposed to their present view, whereby they are overlooking us and saying that there is nothing wrong. A final look at the second city in a moment. There can be no argument that Fort Lauderdale does have a slum problem, but the city has an opportunity to solve its problem before it gets too complicated or too expensive. Fort Lauderdale's second city is not yet the jungle of concrete monsters that larger communities must contend with, but that will be the inevitable result of continued procrastination. A decision is pending as to which of the urban renewal agency's two plans is the most feasible a decision to be based on a consultant's report. Fort Lauderdale taxpayers will determine the type of financial course to be taken. This is to be decided in a referendum this summer. Arguments against federal aid should make little sense to the householder who must pay the bills. But with or without federal help, Fort Lauderdale's second city must go. This is Jerry Pierce for Outlook. Good night. You have been watching The Second City on Outlook, a weekly presentation of WCKT News. Next Saturday at 6.30, Outlook will present another report of interest to the South Florida community. That's about it for this edition of Rewind. Just time to remind you that Rewind features historical film and video from the Lynn and Lewis Wolfson II Florida Moving Image Archives. To see more from the Wolfson Archives collections, visit our website, wolfsonarchives.org. You can search the archives catalog and watch video online. And be sure to connect to our YouTube channel, where you will find hundreds of carefully curated clips or link to the Wolfson Archives Facebook page to keep up with our busy calendar of historical happenings. Until next time, I'm Rene Ramos. Thanks for watching. Oh, 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 oh.